Red Dead Redemption 2 is famous for delivering the most realistic outlaw experience. Well, I guess old Dutch got all the smoke he wants. But I always wondered, what would it be like if you just lived a normal life? So, meet Bob, a former outlaw with a very dark past, notorious for some serious crimes. And for the next 30 in-game days, Bob cannot break any laws. He needs to save up $18,000 to buy the most expensive house in the game and start a fresh, honest life. Now, we've got a long way to go, and it all starts all the way on day one. Bob's journey will start here in the beautiful town of Ennisburg. Now, Bob was an outlaw at one point, and now he needs to get an actual job. And he starts with a whopping zero dollars. Thankfully, Bob got a job as a miner to earn some money for his first big purchase, which will be a horse. And out here, the cheapest horse is over $400. Well, Bob is gonna need to get to work. This was a different type of life for Bob. He was trying to live an honest life before he would just rob a train or shop, and then he would call it a day. But now, well now, he's actually doing work. It also felt like the workers didn't really care too much about Bob at all. Hey, did I get in your way? But Bob kept at it, and at the end of the day, Bob got $60. Not bad. Still a bit away from that over $400 horse. Now, Bob is kind of far away from a hotel, so he's gonna be sleeping in the woods tonight. Hopefully, nothing goes wrong. That's fire. Mind if I warm my bones? Y'all knew this was Murphy Hills. You should be careful where you're camping. Y'all be careful where you wander. Come on, let's go. I think he got the message. Go kill you next time. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess Bob got lucky. At one point, he might have been the one to do the same thing to someone. It's on to the next day. On day two, Bob decided to get a job at a dock where he would literally fish for, I guess you could call it an oil-infused fish. The boss wasn't really too detailed on the job description, but either way, Bob got all the way to 144 bucks. That horse is pretty close now, it feels like. In the same day, Bob decided to do a postman job, and well, the only problem is Bob still doesn't have a horse, and that means he would need to travel all the way on foot to these destination points. The deliveries took Bob into day three, and would you look at that, all that work Bob did got him barely any money. The house as of right now seems like a dream too big to even comprehend, and on day four, Bob just continued to work, earning more and more money. But on day six, Bob saw something that nearly triggered him. As soon as he saw that wanted man on the back of the horse, he thought of all the things that he used to do. Train robberies, robbing stores, forcefully taking money from others for really no reason. But that wasn't Bob anymore. On day seven, Bob continued working. Eventually, after a simple wagon drive, on day 10, Bob did it. He had enough for a horse. Bob decided to name this horse Spotty for obvious reasons. And Spotty had something very important to say. Please, please subscribe. Now that Bob has a horse on day 11, he decided to get a job working at this local farm. Since he can travel, he decided to say goodbye to Ennisburg. And right away, Bob was forced with a big challenge. Where the heck did you go? You seen a dog around? She went and got herself lost. Poor thing's been gone for hours. Any chance you could help me find her, please? Bob looked for this dog for literally hours, and it was definitely very tough on him. However, just when Bob was about to abandon this objective, he finally found it. So Bob did the right thing and returned it to its owner. Although the owner had some choice words for the dog. You don't get here right now, I swear I'll stop on your paws. Bob thought he might get some money from this young man for helping him out, but instead it was just a good deed. I guess Bob needs to get used to doing things that don't have a reward attached to it. And yet again, Bob will be sleeping in not such a good spot. Day 12 approached, and it was Bob's first full day working at the farm, and it actually went pretty well. And on that same day, Bob actually got one of the biggest tasks he has had so far. He had to rake an entire garden. Not that crazy. But after the lesson he learned yesterday, he needs to learn to not expect anything big to come from a good deed. So he kept at it. Even though he wouldn't be paid as much as he thought he should be, it didn't matter. It was about turning the page in his former outlaw life and striving to get that home in a moral way. And just like that, Bob finished. On day 12, Bob got the feeling again that people didn't really like him like he was just another worker, which I guess he was, but people were starting to stare at Bob. On day 13, Bob's work performance was going down a bit at the farm. Ah! Ah! Damn it. 
But Bob got some money from the farm owner. Not nearly enough for the house, though. So Bob's journey on this farm came to an end on day 13. However, Bob now has his sights set on the rising town of Valentine, a town known for hardworking men. He hoped for a bigger and better opportunities here. And that house, though far, seems to be a real possibility. And on day 14, Bob reached this town later in the day. He picked up a shift cleaning tables at the local saloon. And Bob got paid nearly as much as he was paid at the farm. And for the first time, Bob was about to do something he had never done before. He checked into the Saints Hotel. And as Bob approached the door to his room, he opened it and he couldn't believe his eyes. He finally had a full room to himself. It had been days sleeping outside in the cold, and now, well now he actually has a roof over his head. Bob laid on the soft cotton bed and dreamt of the house that he will one day hopefully have. It was the morning time, and Bob, with the best night of sleep he has had in days, was feeling more motivated than ever. He got started working at a saloon for the morning shift, and then quickly made it over to the farming area, where he fixed a fence. He then cleaned up a chicken coop. Though the day was going great, and Bob was very productive, he just felt like something was missing. Since up to this point, Bob had been doing work for other people. He couldn't help but think, is this all he's good at? Working for others. Later that day, Bob made a huge decision. Really the first selfish decision he's made since he's tried to make a change from his outlaw life. He purchased a gun. A gun he would soon use to hunt. But not just hunt any animals. Legendary animals. You see, Bob knew that around the country there were areas in which legendary animals have been spotted. And vendors would be willing to pay a pretty big big price for such animals. So Bob left Valentine and went off to hunt. On day 17, Bob found the location of where a legendary beaver had been spotted, and Bob spent hours looking for this beaver, unaware of something also hunting in this area. Bob continued looking, and guess what? He found it. Dashing across the grass, Bob saw it and started to run towards this legendary beaver. As soon as Bob caught up to the beaver, he saw it swimming in a small lake and took a shot. The first shot was absolutely terrible. His second shot was a bit better, but still terrible. And then the third shot... Well, the job was done. Until... I guess hunting isn't Bob's thing. On day 18, Bob tried out bounty hunting. He took his criminal to the jail of Strawberry, and even though Bob wasn't making much money, he was finally working for himself. So in a way, Bob felt really good. Holy oh, shit! No part of this. When I get out, I'm gonna tie you up with your inner. Bob received a threat from this man, but didn't think anything of it at the time. So he just went and collected his money and was on about his day. Now, it's day 18, and soon 19. This house is still very far away from Bob's possession. Something needs to change, and it needs to change fast. So Bob decided to go treasure hunting. On day 19, Bob tried gold panning, in hopes that he could maybe earn some good money through getting a big piece of gold. But ultimately, the process was long, and no gold was made. But then, Bob found a cave. Unaware of what to expect, he went deeper inside the cave until he found a room full of statues. Bob pressed buttons in a specific order and was lucky enough to trigger a small slot which opened up, where he would get some gold bars. Bob worked his way out of the cave and found an abandoned train, which had two big gold bars. Bob's luck continued on day 20, where he found an abandoned brick house with some serious mystery to it. That mystery ended up leading to a platinum band, a gold nugget, and a platinum picket watch. And on day 21, Bob couldn't believe it. He also found an abandoned chimney with even more goods inside. Bob decided to take his winnings into the city. Bob went and saw a trapper, and in total he earned $2,860. Though it was still a long way from the house, it was the most money he had had. But Bob wanted to make a very important purchase. Bob wanted to buy the gun store. The only problem is, it was worth $5,000, so Bob needed to get to work. Bob didn't waste much time, as he worked a couple of days helping construct a building. 
and on day 23, he literally worked all day cutting up fish, which Bob weirdly did not seem to mind. On day 24, he got a job sweeping the entire dock, which was long and hard work, but the city paid pretty well. As Bob was working, he saw something very beautiful that he just had to take a break. It was a rainbow. He started to reflect on how far he had come from a simple miner to now closing in on buying his business and also being close to buying his dream home. On day 25, Bob's hard work finally paid off and he had enough to buy his business. Bob walked in confident and he did it. Bob, who has been taking orders from bosses since day one, is now a boss himself with a business that is entirely his. On day 26, Bob dropped off his first shipment of supplies to the gun store. He made his money back and more from the sales that he had generated. And Bob, for the first time, started to have a little bit of fun. On day 28, he even gave Spotty a makeover. It felt like nothing could touch Bob. It felt like Bob was on top of the world. Until his business was destroyed. Bob didn't understand why anyone would do this to him. He had been so good. Why him? After everything he had been through, Bob looked at his destroyed business and couldn't believe it. But Bob was a man who had no quit in him, even though he wanted to. He started to clean up the mess, trying to think who could possibly have done this. As he walked outside, he saw people give him pity. And then, just then, Bob thought of the one man who could have done this. A while back, Bob caught one bounty, a terrible man. He also received a threat from this man, but Bob didn't think anything of it at the time. When I get out, I'm gonna tie you up with your innards. And surprisingly enough, there was a gang of men that looked just like this man that he captured in the bounty. And what would you know? They had loads of cash and a bunch of guns from Bob's business. Bob had a choice. Tuck his tail and start over from the beginning, or break all of his morals and commit a crime. But this time, he had a reason for it. It was justified, but he still had to make a choice. And well, He took Spotty to his new house, and I guess that was it. Well, I guess this is where Bob's story ends, right?